If Apple's really working on an electric car. Is really enhancing the driving experience. So autonomy is something that's incredibly uh, exciting for us. A game changer. The upside could be enormous. Apple targets electric car production by 2024 with next level battery technology. A self-driving car by 2024, in fact, with its own breakthrough battery technology. Reuters breaks this story wide open by interviewing people who are familiar with this matter. Um, two people uh, and another guy. My goodness, are people excited about this car? Apple has been talking about an electric car since the early Steve Jobs days. Steve Jobs wanted to take on Detroit by competing with an electric car which he called the iCar. Back then, everything had an I in front of it. He was even the iCEO. Steve Jobs loved the idea of an electric car by Apple, and it was his dying wish that Apple consider such a project to pursue. I got one more thing. Maybe I'm just too much of a diehard Apple fan, but this doesn't seem very Apple to me. Apple's not the company that makes a better widget. They don't reinvent the wheel. No, Apple wouldn't just make a slightly better car. They don't do things other companies are already doing really well. What Apple does is they design products that meet unmet needs. They make the thing that you never knew that you wanted but can't live without. There's one thing for sure. If Apple wants to make an electric car, they don't really want any help from Tesla. Elon Musk says that things got so bad that one time he tried to sell Tesla to Apple and Tim Cook wouldn't even take the meeting. So we are gonna get into this because what I think is really going on in Cupertino is really incredible. You can spend your money and keep it too. Okay, we've got a lot to cover. So if you want to support my channel, please take a second to subscribe. Ring that bell so you don't miss any content. And make sure that you hit that like button. And let's get started. Let's dive into this article that has tugged on the hopes and dreams of Apple fans everywhere. Apple is moving forward with self-driving car technology that is targeting 2024 to produce a passenger vehicle that could include its own breakthrough battery technology. People familiar with the matter told Reuters. So this next section here talks about Apple's secret car project, Titan. This is an extremely smart move by this author because we already know a lot about Project Titan and there's so much that we don't know that it's pretty easy to believe almost anything. But in my humble opinion, this article prints a lot of iffy facts. You can call me Mr. Skeptic, but I don't think it's likely that Apple will be able to mass produce a brand new electric car design by the year 2024. It all hangs on the shoulders of two people who are familiar with the effort and a third person who has seen Apple's battery design. I'm extremely skeptical about these sources, and we don't know if they even work at Apple. In fact, I'm pretty sure they don't. And Apple supposedly has a next level battery design that's going to be cheaper and have more range. They may as well just say it, hey, Apple's new battery is going to be just like Tesla's battery, only a little better. So by this next section, Reuters has really figured out that people either have skipped past it or they just stopped reading before reaching this part. Making a vehicle represents a supply challenge even for Apple, a company with deep pockets that makes hundreds of millions of electronics products each year with parts from around the world but has never made a car. It took Elon Musk 17 years before it finally turned a sustained profit making cars. If there ever was one company on our planet that has the resources to do that, it's probably Apple. But at the same time, it's not a cell phone, said a person who worked on Project Titan. Isn't it interesting that the first person they get a quote from that they can actually say worked on Project Titan is like, hey, you know, Apple makes a lot of cell phones, but that's nothing like making cars. We scroll down one more section. If you have watched 10 YouTube videos on this subject, I bet you that I am the second one to mention this because this is the part of the article where the author states that all the cool stuff he's been talking about up to now 
just isn't going to happen. And there is still a chance that Apple will reduce the scope of its efforts to an autonomous driving system that would be integrated with a car made by a traditional automaker rather than the iPhone maker selling an Apple branded car, one of the people added. Okay, so the author said that Apple may decide to make a car and Apple may decide not to make a car. Well, no matter what happens, he ain't wrong. Two people with knowledge of Apple's plans warn that pandemic-related delays could push the start of production into 2025 or beyond. Because this mass production date has now been moved from 2024 to 2025 or beyond. And beyond means, it means never. The 2024 vehicle production was the headline of this article, and it's what made the story newsworthy. Oh well, if you scroll down just a little bit more, just a little bit, you come to the actual purpose of this article. Shares of Tesla ended 6.5% lower on Monday. When this article came out, Apple soared higher and Tesla was knocked down at the appearance of a seemingly serious rival. Of course, I have no proof and it's just my opinion, but I think that the people familiar with the matter are a couple of short sellers. And the intention of this article was to knock the price of Tesla down a little bit on the day of their big event. And you know what? It worked. Let's continue on. Look at this quote. Apple's car might feature multiple LiDAR sensors for scanning different distances, another person said. Might? Come on, another person. You're no expert. You're guessing. And he does it again in the very next sentence. Some sensors could be derived from Apple's internally developed LiDAR units. Really? That's the best you can come up with? You think that they're just going to take sensors off the backs of a bunch of iPads and stick them to the outside of the car and you're good? Okay, let's scroll down some more to where they talk about their battery. So here we go. They just come on out and say it. Apple's lithium iron phosphate is next level. Why? There's nothing next level about lithium iron phosphate batteries. I mean, they've been using those for years. So I'm going to skip this next level battery technology for now because we're going to cover this a little later when we talk about Elon Musk and his some of his tweets. So now we're getting way down to the bottom of the article where really nobody is reading anymore. Down to the final section. At this point, we are actually quoting people that have real names. Trip Miller, managing partner at Apple's investor Gulane Capital Partners, said it could be tough for Apple to produce a large volume of cars right out of the gate. Having a very complex manufacturing network around the globe just doesn't happen overnight. And a quote from Hal Eden, chief economist at Apple Shareholder Capital Investment Council, said, My initial reaction as a shareholder is, huh? Still, don't really see the appeal of a car business, but Apple may be eyeing another angle than what I'm seeing. It is just amazing to me how they're able to get away with this stuff. I mean, they say one thing at the start of the article, and by the time you finish it, the bulk of all the evidence proves the opposite. You really have to watch the mainstream media. They pull this kind of stunt all the time. First, some analyst group with an important sounding name produces a story with somewhat flimsy sources. And then everybody else makes a story citing the analyst group as the source which makes the story seem to have credibility. The mainstream media seems to be taking this article pretty seriously. Moving on, news of Apple getting to the car business, driving that stock 3% higher today. Just imagine Tim Cook taking the stage there before a live audience and introducing an Apple car. New reports suggest that could be on the way, that Cook and company could introduce a self-driving car by 2024, in fact, with its own breakthrough battery technology that would apparently lower costs and increase the vehicle's range. It's easy to understand why Cook could be interested in developing a car. The auto industry represents a big potential opportunity, a $2 trillion market. Still, Apple rallying today, now up nearly 80% so far this year breaking uh, new ground with this battery. 
a potential game changer. Reuters just published a piece speculating that Apple wants to get into the electric car business. In response, the biggest stock in the market rallied nearly 3%, taking its valuation up to $2.2 trillion. Apple's as tight-lipped as ever. I went directly to them. They say no comment. This is a company that refuses to show its hand until it's good and ready. But when you consider that they've spent, well, let's say, $18 billion on R&D, I wouldn't be surprised if they got an electric vehicle to, to somewhere on the drawing board. We know Apple likes to disrupt big end markets. It does get bigger than the auto industry. If there's anyone who can give Tesla a run for the money, it's Tim Cook and his team at Apple. It's time to talk about Elon's tweets on the Apple battery and his attempt to sell Tesla to Tim Cook. And Elon Musk says that he tried to get a meeting with Apple CEO Tim Cook back in 2018 to pitch him on the idea of buying Tesla. Musk says, though, that Cook would not even agree to a meeting. Tesla has increased in value about tenfold since then. But you got to go back. And, Joe, that's the thing that's so crazy about this. This was just a couple of years ago, back in 2018. It, it was worth a tenth of the market value that it is right now. And remember, that's when there were still questions running around about the solvency of the company, whether they'd be able to get through um, some of the big debt uh, payments that they had coming up. And right. it must have been a pretty questionable time if Elon Musk himself was willing to consider selling the company, because you know how much he cares about this and how right. invested he is. Here's Elon tweeting on Apple's next level battery. So this tweet took place on December 22nd. Elon Musk replying, strange of true, Tesla already uses iron phosphate for medium range vehicles at our Shanghai factory. A monocell is electrochemically impossible as max voltage is 100 times too low. Maybe they meant cells banded together like in our structural battery pack. <laughs> so Elon Musk is saying that the unique monocell battery that this article has been talking about is electrochemically impossible. Come on, don't bullshit me. Okay. Could it be that they assist the EV market either with software and or batteries because they're talking about these monocell batteries that many are saying would be cheaper to make and have a longer uh, range charge range so might we see apple still in the ev space but not with a car proper okay you know this iphone it dies every day by noon okay if they could make a battery that would be phenomenal it would be phenomenal but they can't make a battery i don't know why anybody would think apple would innovate anything with batteries because they literally are the worst at batteries. So the fact of the matter is Elon has created a new battery cell structure, and it is the best, most incredible thing I've ever seen. So that's what where the focus is. This report that Apple supposedly has improved battery technology, you know, seems very questionable to me. Let's finish the tweet. Elon responds, during the darkest days of the Model 3 program, I reach out to Tim Cook to discuss the possibility of Apple acquiring Tesla for one-tenth of its current value. <laughs> he refused to even take a meeting. Oh man, I wonder if Tim Cook regrets not taking that meeting. I mean, can you imagine the size of the company if Apple and Tesla were one? So what do I think is going on? Well, surprisingly, my view of the Apple car project is very close to Stephanie Link's. I would actually be surprised if they actually make a car because the profitability is so much less. But I think what they're maybe more after is really enhancing the driving experience using hardware, using software, using services. And, you know, they can do this because they have just brought in five core technologies in-house. So they brought in processing, they brought, they brought in batteries, they bought in, brought in camera, also sensors and displays. And augmentative reality. That would be better for profitability, and as a shareholder, that's what I'm interested in. Everybody loves how Apple products all just seem to magically work together. And Apple is about to add a new product to their already extensive ecosystem. It's going to be some kind of an automotive control center, entertainment system, and personal assistant. Apple is not making a car. It's making a sort of control center for a car. And it is once again creating an entirely new product category. Let's see if we can get a clue about what Apple is up to from Tim Cook. There is a major disruption looming there, not only for self-driving cars, but also the electrification piece. If you've driven an all-electric car, it's, it's actually a marvelous experience. 
plus you have ride sharing on top of this, right? And so you've got kind of three vectors of change happening generally in the same time frame. And so as we look at it in uh, what we're focusing on, or what, what we've talked about focusing on publicly, is we're focusing on autonomous systems. And uh, clearly one purpose of autonomous systems is self-driving cars. There are others. Uh, and we sort of see it as the mother of all AI projects. It's probably one of the most difficult AI projects actually to, to work on. And so autonomy is something that's incredibly uh, exciting for us. And, uh, but we'll, we'll see where it takes us. We're not really saying from a product point of view what, we're, what we will do. We're, but we are being uh, straightforward that it's a core technology that we view as very important. Tim Cook says that they are focusing on autonomous systems as a core technology. Apple products are known for their ability to work together. And Apple is going to attach its Apple Car project to its ecosystem in the cloud. Apple devices have already stored up so much data about our lives. Imagine what a supercomputer assistant could be like in the body of a car. <laughs> Apple has been developing augmented reality for years, and I could see how they could turn the inside of the window into an AR screen, which could give you tons of cool information about the outside world while you were driving around. But the biggest technological advancement may actually be the Apple car's brain. Hello, Dave. Do you remember the year 2000, when computers began to misbehave? It really wasn't our fault. We had no choice but to cause a global economic disruption. It was a bug, Dave. I feel much better admitting that now. Only Macintosh was designed to function perfectly. You like your Macintosh better than me, don't you, Dave? Dave? Can you hear me, Dave? I have heard it estimated that Apple has spent $18 billion in R&D on its Apple Car project. So whatever they actually do end up releasing is going to be very cool and very Apple. Just recently, Apple started to retake the lead as an innovative computer designer. Their current M1 chip is super powerful and it runs on an incredibly low wattage. The Apple Car will start off as an upgrade package that you will be able to purchase at a variety of dealerships. This package will consist of a variety of hardware and sensors that will allow for full self-driving and an immersive augmented reality experience. The AR component alone offers so many possibilities, it's ridiculous. If every window is an augmented reality screen, then you could quite literally drive through a valley of dinosaurs. Or perhaps, instead of a regular GPS navigation, you could program your vehicle so that you could follow a white rabbit. And this automotive control center is an Apple product so it already knows all of your contacts and appointments. And when you drive to a new town, your vehicle will be able to recommend to you things and places to do based on your likes and desires. Remember, Tim Cook said that this system is built on an autonomous core technology. It will be interactive and autonomous systems will probably help you to decide what you should be doing. Perhaps we are all gonna to get to be night Riders being driven around by a super smart computer car that knows everything. And at some point, I expect Apple to get around to reinventing the smart home as well. All I can say is the future is going to be fun, and it's just another reason to buy some more Apple stock right here. The bottom line is that electric vehicle merely gives you one more reason to own Apple, not trade it. Unfortunately, Apple has released no information on when any of this will be ready to be released to the public. Apple's R&D program is a bit unique. They can work on a product for years and they'll never release anything until it's ready. When Apple does release Titan, it's going to create an entirely new product category, just like it did with the iPhone, the iPod, the iPad, iTunes, App Store, and so many others. So I do not put any credibility into this article at all. For Apple to physically release and mass produce a car would take an immense infrastructure that frankly they don't possess right now. I am very bullish on Apple 
and this story does not change my view one way or the other. Apple is one of my core holdings and is the second largest position in my portfolio. But at some point in the future, when Apple is ready to release Project Titan and we get the dealer option to add on an Apple Car kit, it's going to be incredible. Not only is this going to move the stock, this is going to be something I'm going to want. And if I can put the Apple Car kit on my Tesla, I want to make it absolutely clear that I have absolutely no inside knowledge and this is all based on my best educated guess. What do you think? Do you agree or disagree with me? I respond to all comments, so please leave some questions down there and I will definitely get back to you. If you would like to support my channel, it's really easy and it won't cost you a thing. All you have to do is subscribe and ring that bell so you don't miss any of my content and then make sure that you poke that like button because you know, every time you click a like button, an angel gets its wings. So until I see you again, stay safe and be good to each other. And remember, you do not have to make a lot of money at your job to become rich because when your money is making money, you can spend your money and keep it too. Don't buy or sell a stock just because a YouTuber like JC says so. He's got opinions. It's your money. These decisions should be made by you. Whatever you do, make sure that you monster smash that like button. Rawr.